You're now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative that's the go getter energy that moves you to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all this together into one mindset, one method, one philosophy, one book, one show, and what you get is work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. Today's topic is what your future self would tell your current self. So this one is a, we're flipping around the common question that you may ask of a person who is some period of time ahead of you, whether that be in age, in experience, or whatever. You ask them, well, what are some things that you would tell your younger self? Everybody knows about that question. What would you say to your younger self, or what would you tell yourself if you were starting all over in the thing that you're doing today? Here's the question that we're gonna ask. What would your future self, the person 10 years from now, you 10 years from now, say to you today? What would your older self say to you? In other words, we're going to be predicting your future based on your current life, or at least that's the way that's the way that the advice would be coming to you. And there are certain things that I'm going to step out and I'm going to predict that your future self would say to current you right now, if if this is a big if the future version of you is actually the person that you want to become. So in other words, take the type of person that you plan on becoming right now, where, you, where do you see yourself going in the future? What are the actions that you're taking? What are the results that you wish to achieve? What type of person are you gonna be from this point forward? And let's say that you do everything the right way, the way that you wanna do it. You achieve all the things that you wanna achieve. You do the work that you gotta do, you step your game up, you take the actions, you do what you're supposed to do, and you get to where you wanna be 10 years, 20 years, 50 years from now. And let's say that that all happens, what would that person say to you today? That's what I'm going to tell you today, what your future self will say to you. So you need to reverse engineer all the things that your future self is going to tell you today that I'm going to give them to you. You need to take what I'm telling you here today and reverse engineer it backwards to make sure that you are living up to these things starting right now so that you actually become this version of your future self who will be qualified to make the following statements that I'm going to tell you that it's going to say to you. So, so what you need to understand is that if you don't do the things that you're supposed to do, everything that I'm going to tell you here today will be rendered moot and it will not apply to you. It'll apply to somebody, somebody who actually did the things that they wanted to do or things that they decided that they were supposed to do for their lives. But if you don't do what you're supposed to do, what you decide you're supposed to do, then everything that I say here today will not apply to you and you're just wasting your time listening to this. So make sure you reverse engineer this. It just takes a one step of extra thinking, which I'm sure you're capable of doing because you're a smart podcast consumer and you know, understand everything I'm saying here, how, it's gonna, how you're going to start making it apply to you right now today. Point number one, the topic once again is what your future self would tell your current self. First thing your future self is going to say to your current self is going to shake your hand or give you a hug and is going to say thank you. Thank you for being disciplined enough to delay gratification. This is the most important thing that your future self is going to thank you for is your willingness and ability to delay gratification. Because delayed gratification is a byproduct of the very first principle of the whole work on your game philosophy, which is discipline. Discipline to show up every single day and do the work. See, when you're showing up every single day and doing the work, all right, there's nothing in that statement that says anything about rewards because you may have to show up a whole lot of days and do a whole lot of work before you get any rewards. And there are times when you have to show up, you're going to tell yourself, I'm going to show up X number of days and do X amount of work and then I'm going to get a certain reward. So therefore, you're motivated to show up and do the work for a certain number of days because you know the reward is coming at a certain point. But here's what's going to happen. And maybe you have experienced this already. You're going to show up that number of days and you're going to do that number of work expecting a certain result after a certain point and it's not going to be there. The results didn't show up. You did all the work. You followed the system. You did exactly what you planned to do, exactly what you were told to do, exactly what you were made to believe would produce a certain result and the result is nowhere to be found. It absolutely did not happen. Are you still at that point willing to execute delayed gratification? Are you still willing to be disciplined at that point in life? Because if you are, 
I'm going to tell you what you get. Your future self will thank you for it. Your current self won't have much to say. Your past self has nothing to do with this conversation. But your future self will thank you for being disciplined enough to continue to delay gratification even when you thought the gratification was supposed to arrive today and it just didn't get there. Uh, you ever ordered a, a Christmas gift or a, a birthday gift for a person online and then it just didn't arrive on time and you found out that you were going to get the gift after the holiday or after that person's birthday passed and you were really pissed off and you're like yo i the main reason that i ordered it so i could get it to give it to this person on a specific date and then you can't give it to them and you probably end up cussing the company out which you should if they didn't do what they're supposed to do didn't, they didn't hold up their end of the bargain but in this situation let's say you did that same thing you ordered the gift but it's for yourself and it didn't arrive at the date you thought it would arrive would you keep working would you keep calling and let's say the company doesn't answer the customer service line nobody answers the phone would you keep calling back over and over again until you get somebody on the line and get a resolution to the challenge that you're facing that's the way of gratification are you willing to continue to work even when the success has not arrived even when you expected it to be there it's not there yet how much work are you doing today that's going to pay off not now but in the future and sometimes in the future that you cannot even you can't even say exactly when it's going to pay off but you know it is going to pay off and you're willing to keep doing it this, this is a rare skill you may think it a normal thing if you happen to be this type of person, but this is a rare skill. Not too many people have this ability. Let me ask you a question. How far into the future are you willing to put in work for right now? Let me ask that question again. I think I, I put the wrong emphasis on the wrong words. How far into the future are you willing to put in work in order to achieve something in the future? How, far, how much work are you willing to do right now to achieve something how far in the future? Like What's the X? How far into the future are you willing to work today in order to get something later? Like, are you willing to do a whole lot of work today to get something in like three weeks? Or are you, are you willing to work for something that's only going to pay off in three years? Are you willing to do something that's only going to pay off in 10 years? How far into the future are you willing to start working right now? Like, how far into the future are you willing to delay your gratification? Because see, some people will work hard as long as they know they're getting a, a reward in 15 minutes. And some people will work hard knowing they're getting a reward in about a month and a half. And some people maybe will work hard to get something on this exact date next year. And some people will do it. They don't even know when exactly it's going to pay off, but they have good reason to believe that it will pay off. And they're willing to keep working until it pays off. The question I'm asking is how far are you willing to delay gratification? How far out can your gratification be delayed for you to keep doing it and be all right with that? There's no right or wrong answer to this question. Just a question that you should have an answer to because there are some things in life that it might take longer than maybe what you expected or maybe what is, quote, normal, close quote, to get a result. And if you're not willing to delay gratification that far, then maybe you should find something else to do. Everything ain't for everybody and everybody ain't for everything. So you, gotta, you should have an answer to that question. How far into the future are you willing to delay gratification? Because that way, it'll be easy for you to decide what to say yes to and what to say no to. Your future self, however, will thank you for all the gratification that you are willing to delay today. So the more gratification you are willing to delay today until the future, whatever that future is going to be for you, the more profusely your future self will thank you. The more, grat the more gratitude your future self will have for your willing willingness to delay instant gratification. Whenever you do choose to chase instant gratification... It's like cashing in on a lottery ticket. You know, you have the time and the energy today and you're trading it in for its current value. But if you just held on to that winning lottery ticket, and this is not really the way lottery tickets work, but I'm creating this metaphor for the purpose of uh, furthering my point. If you just hold on to this winning lottery ticket, though, with compound interest, it'll be worth much more in the future. So in other words, it's kind of like if I gave you a dollar today or let's see, not even say a dollar, let's say a penny. Maybe some of you have heard of the explanation when someone talks about uh, compounding and compound interest you say all right i'll give you i give you a thousand dollars today or i'll give you a penny and you can double it every day for x number of days i don't remember the number of days which one would you take the instant gratification person does simple math and says a penny is nothing even if you double it, it's only two cents double it again they do a little bit of mental math they're like all right i can see it getting up to what two cents four cents, eight cents, 16, 32 cents, 64 cents. Uh, that's not worth much. Why would I want a penny? I'll take the thousand dollars. They'll take the thousand dollars. That's the instant gratification. They're getting the payback right now. But if you were to actually double that penny every single day for, I don't even remember how many days it is, but it's not that many days. Eventually it becomes so much more than the thousand dollars that 
if you didn't understand once if you did not understand compounding interest before that example you understood it after and if you have a bad memory like me when it comes to that example then you won't be able to flush all the numbers out as i would have done but that wasn't even in my notes it was just something that i thought of you can go look that up yourself though don't cash in your lottery ticket of to get instant gratification for everything right now i mean all of us go for instant gratification every now and then with something that we want if you everybody has their thing whatever that thing is some people like to watch tv it doesn't really do anything for you in the future but is entertainment for the moment right some people like to eat candy some people like sweets some people like to i don't know whatever your thing is some people like to smoke cigars some people like to drink alcohol none of those things are going to pay off for you quote unquote in the future in any positive way but you do it now because we're human beings so i'm not telling you that you have to be perfect and even if i told you that you wouldn't be able to do it anyway but make sure you're delaying your gratification for the things that are most important to you as often as you can, as often as you can execute that discipline in yourself because it's compound interest that'll be worth much more in the future than it is right now. Point number two, today's topic is what your future self will say to your current self. Second thing your future self will say to you that will help you become more of that future self or to better the chances of you actually becoming and realizing that future version of you is you must take more chances. Take more chances in life. The fear of risk that you feel today is not valid, says your future self. This is your future self talking to you, all right? This is not me. Future self says the fear that you have of taking certain risks right now, all right, that's not a valid fear. And the sad problem is you won't realize just how invalid your fear of risk is until the opportunity to take that risk, to take that chance is completely gone. So what it's saying is by the time you realize that the things that you're afraid of doing right now, you won't realize that those fears were completely unfounded fears, that they were irrational fears that made no sense. They were not based in any logic whatsoever. At the only time you're going to realize that is when the opportunity is already gone. Like, damn, I blew it. Damn, I had the chance. I didn't do anything when I had the chance to do something. And now I can't do anything. You won't realize that your fear of risk is overblown until you can no longer take the risk. And now you have to sit there the rest of your life with that, that empty hole in your soul knowing that you will always be wondering, what if? You'll always be wondering what could have been. This is the great tragedy of people being afraid of taking chances. This is the great tragedy of risk aversion. Now, there are some chances and some risks that it makes sense to avoid. There are some that you should stay away from. There are some that it is completely rational to not take certain chances, but it's not everything. And if there's a reason to not take a chance, there's a reason to not take a risk for something that you want. You should be able to explain clearly why. Why do I not want to take this risk? Why does it not make sense to take this chance right here? If you can't lay that out clearly what that reason is, then maybe you're being a little bit irrational. Maybe you're allowing your your lizard brain to speak for you. Uh, you're, like, you're allowing your reptilian brain, which is hardwired to avoid risk because that's what kept us alive back in the, you know, the caveman days, as they say. You may be allowing that to control your actions right now. You got to be careful with that. Again, I, did, I told you about the exercise of fear setting a couple weeks back here on the show. So go listen back. I don't remember which episode it was I referred to that on. But if you listen to every one of them and you're the gang group member, you have access to all of them. So go back and you can find it yourself. The fear of risk that you feel today is not valid. You won't figure it out until it's too late to do anything about the risk. The saying goes, some people have attributed this saying to Mike, Mark Twain. But when I looked it up, a lot of people are saying Mark Twain never said this. So we'll just say there's a saying. Whoever said it? Anonymous. The saying is, I have known a great many troubles, but most of them never happened. If you could write that down or etch it onto your brain. And think about that every time you find yourself uh, apprehensive about taking a risk or taking a chance or what you deem to be a risk or a chance, because I guarantee you anything that you see is a risk or a chance. There are other people out there walking right into doing the same thing that you think is risky and they're not thinking twice about it. To them, it's not a risk. It's like, I'm just doing it. I don't see it as a risk. I don't see it as taking a chance. You see it as taking a chance because this is all relative. That's why you got to learn how to control your fear because fears are relative. There are some things that you are definitely afraid of doing that other people will do without even thinking twice. They do it while they're laughing while you're afraid of even starting. Is this true or not true? 
So it's all relative. So you got to check yourself. This is what's going on in your mind. Fear is not a tangible thing. It doesn't touch you. It doesn't come running at you. It doesn't scare you. It doesn't creep up from behind and grab you. Fear is just something that's constructed in the human mind. It's a human construction. It is intangible. You can create it. You can destroy it just as easily. What you are afraid of possibly happening, like the possible negative outcome of some risk that you're afraid of taking, it either is not going to happen at all, or even if it does happen, it won't be as bad as you thought it would be. The chances that you don't take in life will be your biggest regrets. Now, that's not your future self talking. That's Dre Baldwin talking to you. I'm going to say that sentence one more time. This is the most important part of point number two right here. The chances that you do not take will guarantee be the biggest regrets of your life. Now, the challenge, the paradox of this is there are some chances that it is smart for you to not take. All right. I'm not saying that you need to take every chance. And there are some chances that it would be ridiculous for you to not take. But because we are humans and we are irrational, you will make some irrational decisions. You will make some irrational errors of omission. My uh, my hope for you, my directive to you, let me not say hope, my directive to you is to minimize your errors of omission that are based on irrational fear. So this will require you to just get a hold of your emotions. That's really what the, the key, key aspect of this is. Get a hold of your emotions and realize when are you making a logical decision that makes sense and you can explain it to yourself, let alone anybody else, versus when are you allowing your emotions, specifically the emotion of fear, one of the strongest emotions that exists, when are you allowing that emotion to control your actions or to control your non-actions, to stifle your actions? Chances you don't take will be the biggest regrets of your life. Point number three. Today's topic is what your future self will tell your current self. Stop waiting to live. This is what your future self is screaming to you right now from the future. Stop waiting to live. You are planning right now to do a certain thing or to be a certain way or to make certain changes in your life. You're just waiting. As soon as this happens and then this happens and then the stars line up this way and when Mercury is in retrograde and there's a full moon and this happens and that happens, then I'm going to do that thing. Your future self is screaming to you right now. Those, all those things that you need to align and be perfect before you do the thing that you're thinking about doing, they will never occur. That set of circumstances will never exist the way that you say they have to exist in order for you to do the thing, in order for you to start living your life. It'll never happen. Therefore, you'll never actually live the life that you want to live because you're waiting for a set of circumstances that ain't happening. That is not possible for it to happen. It's not going to happen. And even if and when it does happen, you're going to have brand new excuses for why you're not doing anything. If you are waiting to live your life right now, your future self is screaming to you. Stop waiting because... Remember that we're all on the clock when it comes to this thing called life. We are all on the clock. Everybody's on deadline. Maybe you're a person who I know some people in my life, in my past and in my present who I've talked to. I'll talk to them about doing something that maybe they've mentioned doing or something that they want to do or something that we are talking about them doing. And I say I allude to in some way, shape or form like, OK, you know that you want to do this thing. Uh, when are you actually going to fucking do it? When are you actually going to begin? When are you going to take the next step in that thing that you said you want to do? And when I talk to people in this way, I don't know, maybe it's my personal style. Maybe it's just the luck of the draw, the type of people that I'm talking to. I don't know. But usually when I say something like that to people who are a little bit hesitant to do their things, they push back with some form of why do I need to do it right now? It's not a rush. It's not immediate. I will do it, but only after a, B, C, D, E, and F are all set up the way that they need to be set up. I don't need to do it right now. Do I need to do it right this minute? What's the rush? I don't want any pressure on me. Why does it have to be so urgent? I don't need to do it right. These are the type of sayings. Some of you may be guilty. Actually, I'm not even going to say some. I guarantee that there are some people listening to this right now who are guilty of using these phrases, these, these excuses for delay, these reasons that you make up, completely logical reasons for delaying action because you're waiting for certain things to occur, other things to occur in life before you do this thing that you claim is important to you. Your future self is begging of you, pleading. Your future self is on his hands and knees right now, begging you to stop doing this. Stop waiting to live your life because you're on the clock 
And eventually your time is going to run out. And see, here's the challenge with the deadline that we're all on called life is that none of us know how much time remains for, before the deadline, before we hit all zeros. When you hit all zeros, the game's over. Like the, the real game, the whole game ends, is over. You will not listen to this podcast again when you hit all zeros. And all of us is on a clock that is, is winding down to zeros. The thing is, none of us knows, every one of us has a different clock. And none of us knows how much time is remaining on it. Therefore, your sense of urgency needs to be that your time may end sooner than you think it will. A lot of us delay action and delay living and put off doing the things that we really want to do in our lives because we unconsciously and foolishly believe that we control how much time we have left when we don't. This is something a lot of people don't really like to think about. They're like, I don't want to hear. I want to talk about death. I don't want to hear anybody talking about death. I remember I was telling uh, I was telling Anna one time about running. One place that I run in Miami, you run past this really big cemetery. It's right in the middle of the city, and I was telling her about it, and she was like, I don't want to be near a cemetery. I don't want to talk about a cemetery. I want to go past the cemetery. They had a haunted house in the cemetery for Halloween season. I was telling her, let's go to the haunted house. And she doesn't like haunted houses. She's like, I don't want to be around anything that has to do with death or dying or cemeteries and things like that. I said, Look, you're going to spend more time in a cemetery than you're going to spend out of a cemetery. But she didn't want to hear any of that, but all you're going to hear, it, as I just explained it. All right, you're going to be dead longer than you're going to be alive. A lot of people don't want to hear about death. They don't want to talk about death. Maybe because when death gets brought up, you think of a loved one who's passed away or you think of the finality of life. Or maybe you have a loved one who is significantly older than you and maybe they're close to getting to that place. Or maybe it just reminds you of someone who is really close to you who passed away and it just brings up uh, bad feelings for you, feelings of sadness for you. I understand that. But understand that somebody's going to feel that way about your death one day. And here's the kicker. You have no idea what that one day will be. It might be Saturday. You never know. Next Saturday. You never know. Therefore, your future self is telling you to stop waiting to live. I know a lot of people who are waiting for some vague future date at which time they would do what they actually want to do. The sad reality is either that future date for that person will never arrive or they will never make it to that future date. All right, they got a future date in mind, but by the time that future date rolls around, they won't be around to meet it. Why? Because we're all on the clock, as I said. All right, how much time is left on your clock? You don't know. The invitation that you are waiting for that will allow you to live the way you really want to live, that invitation is not coming, ladies and gentlemen. It's not showing up. You're waiting for someone to give you the permission to live how you want to live. It is not happening. Stop waiting for it. And if you are waiting to live... You know, until this happens and this and this happens, the stars will never align to make for that perfect scenario that you're planning for. So either do what you want to do right now or accept the fact that you will probably never do it. One or the other. It is your choice. Let's recap today's topic, which is what your future self would say to your current self. Everybody asks the question, what would you say your current self say to your younger self? We're flipping it around. What would your future self say to you? Number one. Thank you for delaying gratification. Delayed gratification comes with discipline, showing up every day, doing the work, having no idea sometimes when that work is going to produce a result. Work done today that will pay off, not now, but in the future. Are you willing, how much of it are you willing to do and how far in the future are you willing to delay your gratification for the work you're doing today? Your future self will thank you for all the, delayed, all the gratification that you are willing to delay because when you chase instant gratification, you're cashing in on a lottery ticket. Yes, it pays you something right now, but with compound interest, it'll be worth a whole lot more in the future. Do you have the discipline to hold on to it? Point number two, take more chances. The fear of risk that you feel today is completely invalid. The sad problem is you won't realize just how invalid your fear of risk is slash was until the opportunity to take the chance is gone. Saying is, I've known a great many troubles, most of them never occurred. What you're afraid of happening either isn't going to happen or it will happen and it won't be as bad as you think. The chances that you don't take will be your biggest regrets in life. And point number three, stop waiting to live life. I know so many people who are waiting for some vague future date to do what they actually want to do. The sad reality is that date will either never occur or it will occur and they won't be around to meet it. The invitation to live how you want to live is not coming. If you're waiting for the invitation in the mail, there's a reason why it doesn't show up every day from the mailman because it's not coming. Nobody ever put it in the mail in the first place. If you are waiting to live until this, this and this occurs, here's a newsflash. The stars will never align to make for the perfect scenario for you to finally do what you want to do in life. Perfect scenario is right now. Do it now or accept that you will never do it. Work on your game. 
Dre all day. Hey, this is Dre all day. If you enjoy this mental game stuff that I talk about on video every day, then I put together a simple master class that will give you one key tip for developing what I call the bulletproof mindset. All you need to do is go to workonmygame.com slash bulletproof. There's the link right here and it's down below in the video description. Just click on it, It'll take you right to the page. I'm gonna give you that video. It's about 20 minutes long, this masterclass. I put together one key tip for developing a bulletproof mindset. And when you get that special masterclass free video, I'm also gonna make you a special offer to get the full bulletproof mindset experience. So just go to that link that you see right here and I'm gonna show you how to develop that bulletproof mindset right now. So if you like this video that you just watched, I'm gonna show you how to take it to the highest possible level. You ready for that? Let's do it.